This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is Geo and Director of Strathmore Uranium, Mr. John DeJoya. John, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. How are you doing today, sir? Well, I'm doing fine. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Strathmore plus uranium. Tell me a bit about the company, and then I really want to dig into the the, the team that you have in place because it's a team that has a, a, a history of, of big-time success. And so when I see the type of uranium market we have now and I see where Strathmore is and I see the great jurisdiction it's operating in, all of that checks a lot of boxes for me, and I think it's a perfect time to introduce the story to our audience. Well, Strathmore plus uranium uh, is a direct descendant of the original Strathmore minerals uh, that Dev started up, geez, 20-some years ago or so. And uh, they brought me on, oh, I think it was 2005, 2006, and I ran the New Mexico operations. I was senior vice president. We divested... uh, Oh, about uh, ten years and uh, nine or ten years ago, and in the meantime, Dev spun out with his Canadian properties and started up uh, the Fission Groups, and uh, we are now on F three up there, <laughs> Fission three. And uh, in the meantime, Strathmore, as uh, the uranium group in the United States, uh, basically uh, went defunct. Well, about two years ago, Dev called me up and asked me what I was doing, and we'd stayed in touch over the years. And uh, I said, geez, Dev, I'm I'm retired, have been for quite a few years now. And he said, well, you're too young for that. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm actually old enough to retire. And he said, no, you need to go back to work. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> well, you know, Dev, I have no desire to make out a time card. I don't want to make out an expense sheet. I don't want to pay taxes. However, I'll help you. And he said, really? I said, sure. So anyway, we we kind of got together and uh, thought along the lines of how this would function. And he said, you know, I I think the way to do this is you'd be the technical advisor. And and by the way, do you have any properties you'd bring into the group? (laughs) By the way. (laughs) I said, well, geez, that's a little different than being a technical advisor. But, uh, you know, let me put my head uh, to that a little bit. So I did. And I said, you know, Dev, I I have a couple in mind. And uh, he said, well, if you're not going to be our chief geologist, I I also need a geologist, too. And I'm (laughs) thinking, boy, this is getting a little deeper than I had originally planned. But... uh, Anyway, long story short, I suggested that uh, we hire Mr. Terrence Osier as our senior vice president. And uh, I talked to Terrence before Dev did, and he turns out he had one of the properties, a partial part of what I wanted to pick up, which was part of our properties when I was with Federal American. But anyway, uh, Terrence came, agreed to come on with us. As senior vice president, I was a technical advisor. And uh, so now Dev had me for two things, uh, senior geologist and uh, the Beaver Rim properties. Hmm. Well, after that, he said, you got any more? (laughs) (laughs) And I said, well, there was a property across the road from where I used to work. And, uh, you know, we had Terrence on. Terrence looked into it. And said, geez, John, those things are still there. That was our agate property. Well, you know, Dev and I talked more, and he said, we need something else. So (laughs) I dug into my mind, and there was a property, oh, about seven miles from the mine in Shirley Basin, where I worked for 10 years. And it was owned by a gentleman down in Colorado. He was an older fella. And I actually led him up to the property with his drill rig one day. And this was long ago. Anyway, I'd kind of remembered it, and I'd gone up there for a barbecue one night with him. And anyway, uh, 
that was our night owl property. It was it had been dropped in the eighties and we picked it up. So that's how I got in with Dev, how we got the three properties that we currently have. Excellent. Let's talk about the importance of jurisdiction and, and, and where the properties are located, right? You are one of the <clears throat> most experienced uranium geologists in the US, right? You've overseen, I believe, over 20 million pounds of uranium in Wyoming alone. And I think you've been in the industry for coming up on five decades. Is that accurate, John? Yeah, that's pretty close. I, uh, my, the first place I worked was out in Shirley Basin, Wyoming. And I, I got hired in 1971 in December, but I, I had another job and I couldn't break away until March. And uh, they said, that's fine. I showed up there, I think it was March 13th, and I was put on night shift as a mine geologist. I had no idea about uranium, no idea about driving a Mack truck or anything like that. They sent me down to the pit. It was about 20 below zero that night. Hmm. And said, this this is your home for the next eight hours. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you tell me how to start it? And they showed me how to start it and said, keep it on the the ramp. You'll be fine. Well, I did. And I, I uh, did that for a, a couple of months, you know, on night shift. And finally, they decided the new kid wasn't that bad. They gave me a promotion and let me come in the office. But... Uh, that's how I got started. And that was in Shirley Basin, Wyoming. Well, Shirley Basin, Wyoming was the second biggest producer in Wyoming. Uh, Gas Hills was the biggest producer at that time. And why Wyoming? Well, Wyoming has the best uh, public, so to say. Hmm. It's friendly. The public is friendly. The regulators are friendly. Uh, it's a good business environment. And everybody says, well, that's great, but, you know, is there any Wyoming, does Wyoming have any ore left? Well, yeah, we actually have quite a bit. And we have some good properties left up there. You know, and one of the things, you know, a property has to have for uh, ISR especially is permeability, porosity, and transmissivity. And these parameters are great in Wyoming, where there's uh, mineralization, they have ISR appropriate deposits. So that's why we're in Wyoming. <clears throat> you know, I was in charge of the New Mexico operations, and we were partnered with Sumitomo Corporation down here. And we struggled and fought and battled, spent millions trying to permit a mine, uh, you know, 15 years ago and pretty much threw up our hands. It was hmm. very, very difficult. Great deposits, a very tough working environment. Times have most definitely changed a bit, right? I mean, we have Wyoming now, one of the leading uranium jurisdictions. We're seeing a, a, a surge in prices right now. I think we just touched a 15 or 16 year high. I suspect that price is going to continue higher. You have, as you mentioned, multiple properties and you have exploration plans for each of those before I let you go, can you do me a huge favor and just provide me an overview of the many catalysts that the company has over the next couple of quarters, not just Q4, but Q1 and Q2 of 2024 as well? Well, we'll be looking at all of our properties, uh, but mostly we're going to concentrate on our agate property uh, over the winter and uh, early spring. <clears throat> it's uh, right across from the major mine district in Shirley Basin. That was Utah International, which became Pathfinder Mines Corporation. And uh, Kerr-McGee Corporation and Getty uh, the Petrotomics was just south of us. Together, they mined about 50 million pounds. This is right across the highway, our agate. I used to go over there. I got to know the geologists that worked there occasionally, and I'd go over and I could look at their cuttings, but they wouldn't tell me anything. Hmm. And it just stuck in the back of my mind. Well, agate 
the mineralization on agate is for anywhere from 15 to 150 feet deep. Now that is shallow for ISR work. Well, we started drilling there a couple of weeks ago and we came up with ore right where we thought it was going to be. The drill logs that we got from Kerr McGee copies uh, were pretty accurate and we're going in and doing some verification drilling some exploration drilling we're expanding the area a little bit uh it, and it's saturated with water of course it has the same permeability and porosity as the deposit across the highway a half a mile away so we're we're very pleased with this uh, this property our initial drilling results have been great uh totally uh set up for isr type work uh, I mined through the original ISR uh, property at Shirley Basin. I did an open pit, three of them actually, that went through the previous solution mining that uh, Utah had done. And they did the first, very first commercial operation in the world for uranium. So I, I was fortunate and fortunate enough to actually excavate, mine through it. I cored it first, determined that there was still enough ore to mine. We open pitted the area and made our uh, production out of the area. And I got to see what happened over a three year period. <clears throat> well, listen, the results early are, are favorable. I, I know the team is excited about what you're seeing. The program is an ambitious one. I believe it's 100 whole drill program that totals 15,000 feet. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that's pretty close. You know, I don't know if that's exactly the number and I don't know what the number will finally turn out to be, but uh you know, we'll just have to wait and see there. Uh Terrence is still drilling out there. Uh I think we'll probably end up with less footage. Excellent. Excellent. John, it's been an absolute pleasure. I got to touch on the share structure briefly. You have, you know, for for the market that I see developing in the uranium space, a pretty modest market cap. It's it's in the order of, you know, between 40 and 45 million, depending on the trading day. I recall the last uranium bull market and I recall seeing companies go from 40 million to 400 million in pretty short order. In addition to the multiple properties, in addition to the flagship that you're focusing on and the good results thus far, you also have a working agreement with a partner that I know has to be um, pretty consequential down the road. Can you just touch on that briefly before I let you go? Yeah, we're, we're uh, let's just call us friends with a working business agreement, uh, the company is UR Energy. Uh, John Cash is the CEO, and John's just been a pleasure to deal with. They've got all the properties I used to have across the highway. <laughs> you know, I moved across the highway in 50 years. <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, they, they've got a lot more than we have right now, but they also have some capacity available, excess capacity, uh, with their license that we hope to tag on to for the agate property now our other two properties we haven't touched on and we did some uh initial work at night owl this year and we, we discovered a lot we didn't hit a lot of ore because it's mostly at the surface and with our drilling we didn't hit a lot we determined a lot about the deposit that we needed to know and gave us some targets for next year uh, but the other thing is we have the Beaver Rim property, which is just south of the Gas Hills. It's a little deeper, but it's right next to the best ore that was in the Gas Hills. I became chief geologist and director of technical services out there in the uh, early 80s. And we had a shaft into the ore at the UPZ area but we didn't get to mine it. Uh, everything fell apart by then. And we, we and Strathmore Plus picked up the properties just south of that. So we're pretty excited about those also. 
a lot to look forward to. Um, I'm glad that you took the time today. I'm looking forward to doing this again soon as the results continue to trickle in. John, it's been it's been great. Thank you so much, sir. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll make sure to put a link to the corporate presentation for those that want to take a deeper dive into the company. But again, I, I anticipate we'll be talking fairly uh, fairly consistently here. Yeah, when you look at our market cap, you have to really put us as a target. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. Hey everybody, Gerardo Del Real here. If you're enjoying the content that you just saw, you can let us know in three simple steps. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share across your network and on social media. Take care, everybody.